Rosa Louise Macaulay Parks born February 4, 1913 and died on October 24, 2005, was an American activist in the civil rights movement best known for her pivotal role in the Montgomery bus boycott. The United States Congress has called her the First Lady of Civil Rights and the Mother of the Freedom Movement. Rosa Parks was born Rosa Louise Macaulay in Tuskegee, Alabama, on February 4, 1913, to Leona, Nay Edwards, a teacher, and James Macaulay, a carpenter. In addition to African ancestry, one of Parks' great-grandfathers was Scots-Irish and one of her great-grandmothers a part Native American slave. She was small as a child and suffered poor health with chronic tonsillitis. When her parents separated, she moved with her mother to Pine Level, just outside the state capital, Montgomery. She grew up on a farm with her maternal grandparents, mother, and younger brother Sylvester. They all were members of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, AIM, a century-old independent black denomination founded by free blacks in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the early 19th century. Macaulay attended rural schools until the age of 11. Before that, her mother taught her a good deal about sewing. She started piecing quilts from around the age of six, as her mother and grandmother were making quilts, she put her first quilt together by herself around the age of 10, which was unusual, as quilting was mainly a family activity performed when there was no field work or chores to be done. She learned more sewing in school from the age of 11, she sewed her own first dress she could wear. As a student at the Industrial School for Girls in Montgomery, she took academic and vocational courses. Parks went on to a laboratory school set up by the Alabama State Teachers College for Negroes for secondary education, but dropped out in order to care for her grandmother and later her mother, after they became ill. Around the turn of the 20th century, the former Confederate states had adopted new constitutions and electoral laws that effectively disenfranchised black voters and, in Alabama, many poor white voters as well. Under the white-established Jim Crow laws, passed after Democrats regained control of Southern legislatures, racial segregation was imposed in public facilities and retail stores in the South, including public transportation. Bus and train companies enforced seating policies with separate sections for blacks and whites. School bus transportation was unavailable in any form for black school children in the South, and black education was always underfunded. After working all day, Parks boarded the Cleveland Avenue bus, a General Motors old look bus belonging to the Montgomery City Lines, around 6 p.m., Thursday, December 1, 1955, in downtown Montgomery. She paid her fare and sat in an empty seat in the first row of back seats reserved for blacks in the colored section. Near the middle of the bus, her row was directly behind the 10 seats reserved for white passengers. Initially, she did not notice that the bus driver was the same man, James F. Blake, who had left her in the rain in 1943. As the bus traveled along its regular route, all of the white-only seats in the bus filled up. The bus reached the third stop in front of the Empire Theater, and several white passengers boarded. Blake noted that two or three white passengers were standing, as the front of the bus had filled to capacity. He moved the colored section sign behind Parks and demanded that four black people give up their seats in the middle section so that the white passengers could sit. Years later, in recalling the events of the day, Parks said, when that white driver stepped back toward us, when he waved his hand and ordered us up and out of our seats, I felt a determination cover my body like a quilt on a winter night. By Parks' account, Blake said, y'all better make it light on yourselves and let me have those seats. Three of them complied. Parks said, the driver wanted us to stand up, the four of us. We didn't move at the beginning, but he says, let me have these seats. And the other three people moved, but I didn't. The black man sitting next to her gave up his seat. Parks moved, but toward the window seat, she did not get up to move to the redesignated colored section. Parks later said about being asked to move to the rear of the bus, I thought of Emmett Till, a 14-year-old African-American who was lynched in Mississippi in 1955, after being accused of offending a white woman in her family's grocery store, whose killers were tried and acquitted, and I just couldn't go back. Blake said, why don't you stand up? Parks responded, I don't think I should have to stand up. Blake called the police to arrest Parks. When recalling the incident for Eyes on the Prize, 
1987 public television series on the civil rights movement, Parks said, when he saw me still sitting, he asked if I was going to stand up, and I said, no, I'm not. And he said, well, if you don't stand up, I'm going to have to call the police and have you arrested. I said, you may do that. During a 1956 radio interview with Sidney Rogers in West Oakland several months after her arrest, Parks said she had decided, I would have to know for once and for all what rights I had as a human being and a citizen. People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. I was not tired physically, or no more tired than I usually was at the end of a working day. I was not old, although some people have an image of me as being old then. I was 42. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. When Parks refused to give up her seat, a police officer arrested her. As the officer took her away, she recalled that she asked, why do you push us around? She remembered him saying, I don't know, but the law's the law, and you're under arrest. She later said, I only knew that, as I was being arrested, that it was the very last time that I would ever ride in humiliation of this kind. Parks was charged with a violation of Chapter 6, Section 11 Segregation Law of the Montgomery City Code, although technically she had not taken a white-only seat, she had been in a colored section. Edgar Nixon, president of the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP and leader of the Pullman Porters Union, and her friend Clifford Durr bailed Parks out of jail that evening. Parks did not originate the idea of protesting segregation with a bus sit-in. Those preceding her included Bayard Rustin in 1942, Irene Morgan in 1946, Lily Mae Bradford in 1951, Sarah Louise Keyes in 1952, and the members of the ultimately successful Browder v. Gale 1956 lawsuit, Claudette Colvin, Aurelia Browder, Susie McDonald, and Mary Louise Smith, who were arrested in Montgomery for not giving up their bus seats months before Parks. Parks died of natural causes on October 24, 2005, at the age of 92, in her apartment on the east side of Detroit. She and her husband never had children and she outlived her only sibling. She was survived by her sister-in-law, Raymond's sister, 13 nieces and nephews and their families, and several cousins, most of them residents of Michigan or Alabama. City officials in Montgomery and Detroit announced on October 27, 2005, that the front seats of their city buses would be reserved with black ribbons in honor of Parks until her funeral. Parks coffin was flown to Montgomery and taken in a horse-drawn hearse to the St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal AIM, Church, where she lay in repose at the altar on October 29, 2005, dressed in the uniform of a church deaconess. A memorial service was held there the following morning. One of the speakers, United States Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, said that if it had not been for Parks, she would probably have never become the Secretary of State. In the evening the casket was transported to Washington, D.C., and transported by a bus similar to the one in which she made her protest, to lie in honor in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol. Since the founding of the practice in 1852, Parks was the 31st person, the first American who had not been a U.S. government official, and the second private person, after the French planner Pierre L'Enfant to be honored in this way. She was the first woman and the second black person to lie in honor in the Capitol. An estimated 50,000 people viewed the casket there, and the event was broadcast on television on October 31, 2005. A memorial service was held that afternoon at Metropolitan AIM Church in Washington, D.C. With her body and casket returned to Detroit, for two days, Parks lay in repose at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Her funeral service was seven hours long and was held on November 2, 2005, at the Greater Grace Temple Church in Detroit. After the service, an honor guard from the Michigan National Guard laid the U.S. flag over the casket and carried it to a horse-drawn hearse, which was intended to carry it, in daylight, to the cemetery. As the hearse passed the thousands of people who were viewing the procession, many clapped, cheered loudly and released white balloons. Parks was interred between her husband and mother at Detroit's Woodlawn Cemetery in the chapel's mausoleum. The chapel was renamed the Rosa L. Parks Freedom Chapel in her honor. Parks had previously prepared and placed a headstone on the selected location with the inscription Rosa L. Parks, Wife, 1913. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video. 
tell us your favorite black history month series as we're wrapping up